Thank you, Joey. Um, Pacific greetings and welcome to the Pacific Blue Line webinar series. On this session, uh, we join our friends from the uh, Kingdom of Tonga in a conversation on the deep sea mining experiences. I would like to um, just repeat the house, housekeeping rules that have been alluded to earlier by Joey. Uh, please ensure your mic and cameras are muted also um, and your cameras are turned off, turned off rather and we will allow q a and commentary after our panel presentation this series uh, has been going on for a while and uh, it is a webinar series of webinars brought to you by the pacific collective including the pacific conference of churches the pacific island association of non-government organization uh, dawn development alternative with women from new era pacific network on globalization the uh, Tuvalu Climate Action, um, Action Network, and of course, the uh, WWF Pacific. As our previous webinars have continued to highlight, deep sea mining is one of the most contentious issues in the Pacific and globally as we talk ocean governance. We are now seeing uh, Pacific governance and uh, multinational industry players taking a forward um, approach to deep sea mining developments in our region with less to uh, no consultation with our people, the absence of legal frameworks and policies that should be guiding such um, ex experimental projects. It raises questions around risks, liabilities and concerns. With much concerns, our Pacific people are mobilizing and demanding a say to how we manage the use of our oceans community groups, non-government organization, organizations, churches, and of course, traditional leaders are joining the call to ban deep sea mining as in the case of Tonga. So um, this afternoon, um, uh, this afternoon, I'm honored to uh, announce the premiere of uh, Malue Hoseni, which means protect the ocean, is a film documentary that presents the voices of the deep sea miners of Tonga. Benaka. Deep sea mining in Tonga uh, is currently we have three companies who are exploring, uh, who has license to explore for deep sea minerals in Tonga. They started ex their explorations uh, license in 2007 and they've been continuous uh, and active in their explorations until up to date. Um, so far, they have no in the past two years, there have not much activities in the water, but rather continuously in their assessment and testing of the samples that they have uh, sampled in the past uh, since 2007. <music> I think everyone is worried now, um, uh, especially the uh, Hipshi uh, fishermen, because uh, they have uh, invested a lot. And some are still buying boats uh, for snapper fishing. Uh, with this uh, idea of um, uh, deep sea mining, it's, it's very flattering to everybody. Uh, all they say, it's safe. And there's very minimal uh, damages, but it's not true. Uh, we know it's not true because uh, they will be disturbing the uh, habitats, uh, wherever the fish are, because we are looking for the fish. And we know uh, uh, that the mounts that they are trying to mine is exactly where the fish are. But this is something to do with the sea because we're concerned with the coral reef. If the coral reef is safe, and then likely the fish is safe. And then the ecological system, they can interact with themselves. But if the fish, the coral reef is like, is bleaching or impact, and then will be like effect on the fish habitat and the population of that community. And we're not getting much fish. 
but we're talking about only one um, particular species of vulnerable species for coral reef. So it's very, we are very concerned just to keep that healthy environment and the ecosystem. The study for other marine scientific studies that are relevant to deep sea minerals activities continues to be. Uh, there have been two recent uh, marine scientific research in the areas where it's um, where they think it's high potential for seabed minerals. Those areas uh, were studied for the marine habitats and also the uh, marine organisms around hydrothermal vents, active ones and dormant ones. The results from that study would give us uh, more insight of uh, what are the marine life like in that those two areas. Before we actually engage, fully engage in the deep sea mining exercise, that there needs to be a closer look at the policies and legislations involved um, that will both protect um, not just women, but also men as well. So when we're talking about deep sea mining, of course, there's a whole uh, chain of um, effects that come with it. So for example, there's, there's land, there's water, um, there's also the environment, and all of these things affect women. Information is not given to us in a way that we can participate in the decision-making or our voices are really heard in the decision-making. And I think that is something the government should really be considering. Deep sea mining is not going to affect only the the decision makers, you know, our seas are going to be affected. Like most of the islanders, we depend on the sea for our livelihood. What do they do? And they affect on our fishing, feeding ground, etc., etc. And if we get any benefit from it, the government and the people, what kind of benefit would we get? A lot of it for those who are doing the mining will get most of it. Why do we think that affecting the deep sea bed will not have detrimental effects? This to me is working on your common sense. We do not have the laws in place or the legal or the policies to protect our tiny islands should there things be happening in, in, in our lives that will cost us our lives. It sounds very um, attractive to think about mining and automatically using about all these countries like Australia with a lot of mining and wealth and all that, which is very attractive. But uh, again, it's, you have to really understand what, what it means, what's the consequences what are you going to get and what, how are you going to deal with waste? Because we already have problems with, with waste. The picture the government paints is this huge income that will come and that it will help everybody. That's the, the, the draw or the lure of, of deep sea mining for our participants, I think for Tonga, for Tonga. Uh, it is a perception that the money will come in and offset our poverty. Will it offset poverty or will it trigger other things that will cause even greater poverty? I, I think it's, it's, it's the promise of money uh, that, that, that is why I think our governments are, um, are rushing into it. We should just say no. It will damage not only the the fish but other living organisms. We will have to get together somehow and call on later to stop this madness. Protecting our fishing ground is a key to our survival. But if we are not protected with reference to this particular interest, I'm sorry to say our people have been duped. Whether it's government or is it private individual, I think they should have some concern for the preservation of our cultural values, 
in the sea or the mana, so called, is part of us, land and sea. To us, is our identity. And once you destroy these things, and not protecting the owners of it, you are totally out of caring for and being leaders of people. Thank you. Um, uh, well, it's uh, there you go. You see um, a lot of questions coming from from the people of Tonga, particularly on uh, why there is no consultation with the people. Um, also, the um, questions around the culture values and, um, and see part of their life and identity. Uh, also, there's a strong message coming out from the video where the, um, are no laws and a policy to protect the people should the uh, deep sea mining uh, go ahead in the in the in the Tonga waters. Uh, thank you again, and uh, we will go to our panelists this afternoon from um, the uh, Kingdom of Tonga. We will start with our um, with uh, Pelana Tita Kara. Uh, welcome, Ka Tita, to this uh, uh, webinar. Uh, I would like to um, introduce Tita. Tita is the uh, program manager at Civil Society Forum of Tonga. Uh, she's the, um, she has been uh, constantly involved in the call to ban deep sea mining. And uh, recently there was an article where um, the, uh, the, the issues were on uh, what if deep sea mining doesn't, uh, what if deep sea mining fails and what are the, the effects on the people of Tonga. So, um, Tita, uh, I know the, the video is something that draws us back to uh, the, the issues of deep sea mining. And as you conduct your national consultation and awareness uh, raising in rural communities, can you please tell us the, uh, the feedbacks from the people that you have spoken to? Can you uh, speak yourself? Um, I'm unmuted, but I think the video is off. Okay, is it okay if I speak without the video? Okay, uh, thank you, um, Nanise. Um, we have had a, a couple of uh, consultations since um, civil society started engaging in the space back in 2012. Um, I think the um, latest um, um, national one was uh, in November 20, um, on the 3rd of November 2020. And um, the message that came out really loud and clear from across the five islands that were engaged on that national Zoom on deep sea mining. Um, the message is people in the island don't want any deep sea mining activity in the EEZ nor the area. So that was the loud message that came through. But I think the whole process of Nanisa need to be stated because it's quite important um, if we want to maximize um, the effect and engagement of as much of our people as we can. Um, so when the issue, um, I think a little bit of history about Tonga's engagement in the deep sea mining space, when we started engaging in 2012, um, our main goal was to actually um, have a moratorium. So that was the original thinking and the original goal. Um, but in 2019 and 2020, when there seems to be um, a lot more messaging from Deep Green um, and the engagement and pushing um, on the space, there was a feeling that we need to actually re-engage um, the people nationally. So that's when we actually host the national consultation um, in November last year. And amazingly, the message that came through 
was a total ban. And that's our um, current um, goal in Objective Nanise. Um, and as a result of that consultation, also led to a whole lot of engagement with our international and regional partners, um, as well as um, we try to engage locally as widely as possible. And I think the message that came through today in today's video echoes what, um, what everybody is thinking from the fishery sector, from the eco um, tourism, uh, as well as, um, you know, the likes of Dr. Kata, who is in the educational sector, I think the thinking is it's not worth the risk. There might be a potential lure of golden opportunities, but compared to what we will be giving up, this is a little drop in the ocean. And talking about the ocean, you know, 99% of our people are depending um, on the ocean as a source of livelihood. So um, I think that's a little bit of a, uh, of um, feedback from the consultation we are doing. Um, and we are still maintaining that um, um, engagement with the stakeholders. Uh, we're currently in Hapai. We just completed a Dixie mining workshop today, um, attended by a whole lot of people from various walk, um, including um, village and district officers. Um, and the message is still the same. This is still the same message in, from Wawa'u um, last month. They are still maintaining their stand, total ban um, on deep sea mining. So I think um, that's basically it. We're not going to change it. We're making a statement to the government. Um, it's currently with the um, church leaders, uh, and we're going to take this um, to the prime minister. And if needed be, we're going to take it to the king. Um, we're ready to fight this battle to as far and as high as we can to ensure that um, we achieve the goal that these people have been asking for. And like Drew said, we're not going to quit until we achieve that total ban. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Tita. That is a very strong um, uh, message coming from uh, the Civil Society Forum of Tonga. And uh, uh, civil, so the Civil Society Forum Tonga actually have been uh, um, uh, have been um, voicing their concerns and also writing to several governments as well as the uh, International Seabed Authority. We thank you for your continuous work. And of course, the uh, message is clear coming from the five islands that they do not want deep sea mining and it should not occur in the, in the waters. Thank you, uh, Cara, uh, Tita rather. Uh, we will now move on to uh, Drew Javier. Drew comes with an extensive experience working with the communities and the civil society sector. Uh, Drew is also a founding member of the Tonga National Youth Cong Congress, and he is also uh, in the uh, Leadership Development Forum and also been very instrumental in setting up the uh, Civil Society Forum of Tonga. Uh, Mr. Javier has also been uh, involved with the um, with the Pacific CSO in calling for deep sea mining. He was also instrumental in the launch of the- uh, well, Thank you, thank you, Tita. Can you, uh, can you mute your button? I, I, oh, I'm sorry, I've been informed that uh, Drew is there with you. And um, we now give Drew the floor to uh, make his presentation. Hello, um, Tita Andrew, can you hear me? Please unmute. Thank you. Thank you, Nanche, and thank you for the very kind introduction, uh, rather long introduction. Uh, uh, sorry, our video uh, is not working, but we are in the outer, outer islands of Tonga. And uh, so, um, you can see uh, that we still have uh, challenges. challenges and some work that need to continue uh, in relation to getting services out to our outer islands. But yes, uh, Civil Society Forum of Tonga uh, 
have called for a total ban. Eh? So two things that uh, we have called for. One is uh, ban deep sea mining, and secondly, to cancel the uh, contract of the uh, company that's being sponsored by the government, eh? Tomol. Eh? And I think we come from two perspectives in taking this uh, uh, decision uh, that the people have called for. But I just have to bear with me a little bit that uh, I'll talk a little bit about history of Tonga and uh, where we have come from. Okay. Uh, Tupo the first was the founder of Moten Tonga in uh, 1845, where he united the whole uh, kingdom. Uh, he was converted a Christian and through that whole uh, uh, conversion, he converted the whole country. Uh, to Christianity. And I think what's interesting about Tupo the first um, is that uh, he's, he valued the creation of God and uh, he sort of saw that, that God has gifted the people of Tonga with this great environment, great soil, the ocean and the abundance of uh, 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 livelihood uh, for people to uh, live on. And I think Tupo the first value and he saw uh, that in order for us to preserve, uh, in order for us to conserve, and in order for us to protect this en environment, he emancipated the people of Tonga in 1862 to uh, help uh, uh, enjoy the life and the richness of the creation that God has given to us. Yeah? Uh, this is a particular time when all the powers were rushing out to make colonies in the Pacific. Uh, I think Topo the First also was advised by his nobles and his chiefs that we no need to look for a bigger power to protect Tonga and all the good things in Tonga, but he decided not. He decided to secede Tonga to God. Eh? Uh, and God would better... Uh, support, looked over Tonga, bring uh, equality, uh, equity to the whole of the people where all the other powers will not. Eh? Uh, and I think that uh, probably if we had uh, asked Tupo the first uh, at that particular time, where will you find God? I would probably bet that his answer would be, would find God in the woods, in the rivers, in the lakes, in the ocean, and the peaches, yeah? um, and that where God lives, yeah? and uh, and that where God expresses love uh, for men, for women, uh, uh, by being in this particular area. Yeah? Um, so I, I think when we look at the whole uh, uh, incident that uh, Tupo Tafe sort of uh, believe. Uh, God put all the economic value into uh, men and women eh, of this world, to the human beings. He did not put economic value into the creation of God that was supposed to be enjoyed by us uh, humans. Eh? Um, and uh, I, I think from that, Tupo the first, he see Tonga to God. Eh? And, and, and we need to protect those uh the assets that he has uh, bestowed on us including the ocean and what the ocean brought eh? secondly uh, uh i don't think we have time to talk anymore eh? uh, the time is running out uh, what we saw our pacific leaders uh fiji in a couple of years have called for moratorium there's no, not even cooperation or even other Pacific Island leaders are saying, yes, uh, we go. They are all going their own direction. Uh, so from that perspective, I don't think uh, we can wait and talk census and discuss the scientific uh, uh, thing about um, deep sea mining. Eh? Uh, so I, uh, we feel uh, leaders are not thinking about us, not thinking about the people. Uh, 
Uh, they are pressured to be thinking about money and the uh, whole economy. Uh, they're not thinking about sustaining the lifeline that brings the uh, livelihood that uh, two of the first have uh, sort of uh, guided us here in Tonga. Right? And I think we have enjoyed for thousands of years uh, the love and what the ocean has given us. And I think we owe it as a generation uh, to make sure that we um, save the ocean uh, for the next for generation, for another thousand of years, for generation to come. Yeah? So civil society is committed to total banning and also uh, to call government to cancel um, the contract and sponsorship. Malon and Sam. Thank you, Drew. Um, that is a very uh, uh, strong call to from the, uh, and thank you for connecting from the uh, from the outer islands. Uh, I know that is the beauty of the uh, work of the civil society. We connect from the islands. We connect from the supermarket. We connect from anywhere to make sure that our voices are heard and are taken into, and of course, the people's um, concerns are being considered. Uh, thank you for that uh, information on the uh, the government's uh, the government of Tonga. Rather, I know money is is uh, of course important, but uh, they should also take into account the uh, the people's lives. Uh, Drew, can I just take you back to the the documentary, the 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 video? Uh, it highlights the uh, different voices in Tonga. Also, you see the video portrays how specific, specific people are mobilizing against the subject of deep sea mining. If you can just briefly share with us the process taken by the uh, Civil Society Forum of Tonga that has informed its national call for a ban. Thank you, Drew. Natsi, can you please um, ask the question again? No problem. Uh, uh, in the film that we just uh, viewed uh, earlier on, uh, we'll see the different voices in Tonga coming very strongly, and it portrays how Pacific people are mobilizing against the uh, subject of deep sea mining. Uh, we would like you to just briefly explain the uh, process taken by uh, Civil Society Forum of Tonga on, yes. the, uh, on the call for a ban. Yes. Well, thank you, Nanche. I, I think that we have uh, uh, we one is consultation and uh, uh, constantly advocating with the people for their support um, on this uh, particular issue. Uh, there's a lot of information uh, flowing from all sides. Uh, so what we try to uh, make sure that uh, we clarify what these issues are uh, coming from uh, scientific uh, issue coming from uh, political uh, level, coming from the government. Our whole focus is on the livelihood of the men and women out at the community. So we basically try to bring out the voices of the men and the women whose lives will be affected. Yeah? The 99% of the population of Tonga will be very much affected. I think at the same time that we are working on their voices, we are working on the voices of the church. Uh, we want the church to come together as a uh, community, uh, not two or three churches. We hope that they all come together because uh, this is, uh, you know, what God calls for eh, to um, help those who are in need when the ocean is destroyed. Uh, these are the flock that will be suffering okay, uh, in their own uh, churches. At the same time, we call on civil societies uh, uh, elsewhere in uh, Europe, uh, in um, Canada, in uh, Britain, in Germany, uh, with letter writing to, to support us uh, uh, in the work. Okay? Um, for companies to, to have companies registered in their own country, not 
to be registered and sponsored by us. Um, and uh, as we know, if in any cases that will happen, we have nothing to say. All these companies will go back to the other country, sit in their 11 story building, enjoy all the tuna that we sent to, to them in Europe. And then they send the turkey tails to Tonga. Um, so we need to be uh, putting a lot of pressure uh, uh, and, and call for support from other civil society in the region, in the, in the international uh, 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 arena to support us here uh, in the Pacific. Mm. Thank you, Drew. Um, that is exactly why are we are in a series such as this to ensure that we push forward the uh, concerns and the issues um, concerning the people. Uh, thank you for that, uh, that statement. And we will now move to our, um, our last speaker for the day. Uh, she's none other than Dr. Ungatia Kata. Uh, Dr. Ungatia is a renowned uh, linguist in, to in Tonga. She is the director of uh, the Pro Tertiary Institute and has been an educator for more than 30 years. Dr. Ungate is actively involved in a relation to human rights and increase in women participation in leadership in the Pacific. Uh, perhaps Dr. Ungate, you, you can uh, share with us your comments about how Pacific governments are lured into such experimental work because of large economic trends. Where do you see uh, Tonga progressi progressing on the issue of D D DSM? Thank you, Dr. Ungate. Uh, thank you, Nancy, and uh, welcome. Hello to to everybody here, and I want to thank Joey and uh, and uh, members who have coordinated this uh, webinar for inviting myself to to be part of the uh, uh, today's webinar. I think, uh, as a, as mentioned by others in in um, uh, from Tonga. Um, we, uh, I, I, I'm, I, I act as an educator for a non-government uh, um, tertiary institution, which has a small research and training center, and which we had partnered with Civil Society Forum of Tonga to do uh, in, um, an awareness uh, program uh, in media using young students to uh, encourage uh, greater understanding of uh, deep sea mining uh, issues, uh, which we, we found out uh, from a, uh, a consultation with civil society in 2015. Uh, this was after the government has passed the 2014 Act, Deep Sea Mining Act, with, with, with no consultation. And so CSFT had conducted the consultation after <laughs> the Act was uh, uh, was passed uh, through um, Parliament, and from there, I think our our attendance in that consultation, we we were able to understand the severe lack of uh, of um, understanding about the issue, and we have partnered with civil society from Tonga, uh, and with uh, Pan, in um, to to. Uh, to support the stand that we should ban deep sea mining and also with the current um, position, CSFT position to cancel the, the Tomo exploration license. Uh, and, and we from um, um, TTI in which we, uh, uh, in which I work as a, as a, as a representative from non-government systems feel very strongly to support that position. In terms of, uh, of uh, uh, you know, governments being lured to, to, uh, to, to by, by the promise of money, I think uh, our positions, as uh, Drew have um, mentioned earlier, the fact that our governments have, uh, the financial situations of our governments, which means that uh, heavy dependence on overseas um, support and uh, the perception that uh, we are tied to to those to those uh, international uh, 
uh, organizations, organizations or um, governments that are funding our our um, our own Pacific uh, uh, countries, I think has a direct influence on 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 this perception that we need uh, on this perceived um, need that we need deep sea mining somehow to offset some of of our own dependent of our dependency on on those governments, and I think. Um, that is something that we need to clearly and strongly um, present to our governments as something that is as a false. Uh, I think uh, uh, Mr. Trump and lately the uh, uh, will say fake news yeah? because we uh, uh, we we think a lot of our leaders, government leaders, um, are promised these. Uh, uh, as Drew had said, are pressured to think that this alternative of looking at deep sea mining as a as a financial avenue, as you would know, um, you don't need to be a rocket scientist to figure out that they think that we can get funding from uh, deep sea mining somehow to offset our reliance on 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 other countries that are funding us, and, and that I think is an is an is a very critical point which Drew had raised earlier the fact that you know that regionally that there is no no uh, no set agreement or collective a collective agreement from our regional um, bodies to pressure our own governments to make a, a united stand against deep sea mining is is telling in itself um, so you know, there needs to be some other pressures or, or how the question is, how can we have a collective uh, a, a, a re Pacific region to, 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 to make a strong stance against deep sea mining to show that financially, I think Nancy, when we did this uh, pro um, awareness um, program in 2015, and you know, after that, and also some years after that, we are very fortunate in the Pacific, well, fortunate or not fortunate, but we have Nauru as a very, very clear example of how, uh, you, you know, of, of, a, of, this, of how something that is promised to have economic benefit can end up to be a disaster, natural disaster, financial disaster, because although there is, like in Tonga, there is a 2014 Deep Sea Mining Act, there is no provision in the act for how the funds, if there are to be funds, are managed. So we can see from the case of Nauru that they had a lot of money, where is that money now? Is the country in a stronger financial um, um, state 50 years from after the discovery of phosphate in Nauru? No. So to me, you know, I, I, I always think it, we don't need to look elsewhere, but within our own context and um, Maybe I'm going over time, but I feel very strongly for, for the fact that we do have an example right next door to look at it and, and be able to think critically about where we should go with deep sea mining. Thank you, Thank you so much, Dr. Ungatia, for that uh, uh, brilliant messages. And of course, if we are to look or if we are to... Uh, see any damages or learn from any country it is right there next to us and of course with uh, with Nauru. Uh, we are now going to move to our um, to our q a session if you would like to ask your questions live uh, please introduce yourself before asking your questions or making a comment uh, and i will also um, invite my co-host joey to uh, to lead us with this Thank you. 
Thank you, Nanise. Uh, and we'll open it up. Some really, really strong messages, but from the documentary itself, from Drew, uh, Tita, and Dr. Ngoatea, uh, sharing the experiences on ground, the process they have taken. I'm sure other civil society, uh, national civil society partners have joined in, and it's interesting to see how Tonga had uh, come about since learning that uh, a legislation was in place and that lacked uh, consultation and awareness with its uh, communities uh, and its stakeholders and the process they have taken uh, to where they are now. Uh, and also the need, as you would hear, Drew, they are now planning to um, involve the churches. So it's extending to other sectors of uh, the communities, other key stakeholders. So we'll open it up for questions and answer, uh, question Q&A session. If you have a comment you'd like to share, uh, please do if you have a question towards our panel. Uh, it's open, the floor is open. You can do so by just maybe having, raise your hand up so we can know who'd like to ask the question. And maybe while we're waiting for people to structure their questions, um, maybe I just a question to Drew and Tita or the, the panel itself. Um, what is the current state in regards to the license now that um, we understand not Nautilus had gone bankrupt? The exchange now that um, Deep Green under the current metals company. Where, where is Tonga now in the state with regards to uh, the current developer on ground? I still like to say, I assume it's still deep green. Uh, thank you, Joey. Uh, my understanding as um, having talked to Daniela um, in November last year, um, he mentioned that there are only two current um, um, contractors who hold the uh, exploration uh, license for Tonga and um, EEZ and the area. And that is GIOTS, uh, Korea Institute of Science and Technology, and um, Deep Green. However, uh, Deep Green is or has not done any exploration in our EEZ. Uh, their current focus has uh, been now 100% um, focused in the area. Kiyotz was planning to be in Tonga in April this year, but um, with the COVID lockdown, um, there hasn't been any activity um, since then. So that's my understanding. Two, um, two companies, one focus in the area and the other one is still open for Tonga, but um, hasn't been um, in the area since. Uh, the other company was... Uh, Deep Blue from um, America, they have actually withdrawn their license. They uh, or otherwise they have not renewed their license. Thank you, Tita. Um, we don't like to entertain anonymous questions on this platform, uh, but I'll give this a go. If they've acknowledged the panel. Uh, they're asking what sort of uh, advice would you give to other Pacific civil societies? Uh, both nationally and regionally. Can I maybe, Drew, you'd like to ans answer that question? I think that um, for us here in Tonga, two things, eh? uh, which is very important for civil society is to uh, make sure that the voices of the community and the people are being heard by government uh, and secondly, is that their livelihood would be uh, uh, very much protected, mm -hmm. eh? uh, mm -hmm. making sure there's no policy. Eh? And, and I, uh, there's no policy that sort of put communities and the people uh, uh, in a difficulty. And, and, and as we, we, we see poverty uh, continues to rise, I think it, it is our duty uh, to make sure that we uh, start to begin to talk to this to about uh, the people. I think it's uh, not only uh, that responsibility, but uh, uh, 
uh, I, I think that that we just need to to stand up and uh, uh, speak for both of our leaders in the Pacific uh, have issue with their hearing. Uh, so very selective in what they hear. So we need civil society to, to be much louder and stronger. And I think that is a service. Uh, it is not a, a service that is uh, recognized or a service that, uh, I mean, we will all feel uncomfortable. Most of sometimes we will feel unwelcome in government and in public situation. But I think that if we believe and we see this as a responsibility as a civil society to, uh, to help, uh, then those little infringement is uh, nothing to worry about. Eh? So in the long run, Joey, when we go to heaven, we will be more happy. Um, Thank you, Drew. Um, I see Norbert who has uh, your hand up. Would you like to ask your question uh, live, Norbert? Yes, of course. I hope you can hear me. Yes, we can. Please introduce but, yourself. Yes, uh, I would love to turn on the camera too, but uh, I just don't see how I can do it. But um, I will just introduce myself really quickly. Uh, well, a uh, good morning from Germany, actually. Um, uh, my name is Norbert. I'm a PhD student uh, of uh, the George August University in Göttingen. I uh, did uh, my PhD research in uh, Tonga, uh, mostly about uh, climate change. I'm still working on the project, but because of the COVID, everything um, um, a little bit slowed down. Um, well, uh, at first, thank you for the uh, presentation, for all the comments. Uh, what I learned uh, in my uh, research is that there's um, often uh, minis ministries in Tonga are not really like working together very well. The interests, in, in my uh, opinion, in my view, um, are going into two different directions. Uh, so if we think about um, agriculture, you know, you, one ministry wants to promote that because of economical reasons. The other institute, like like Maydeck, uh, is rather concerned about uh, the climate change and the water usage and everything like that. So what I would like to to add is, uh, how do the panelists see um, their approach to stop? Uh, deep blue mining, uh, deep sea mining. Sorry. Um, how 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 do how do you uh, how how do? Uh, sorry, it's very early in the morning here. Um, uh, how do you work together with uh, different ministries, and what is their response to your call to stop uh, the the uh, deep sea mining? Thank you. Thank you very much, Norbert. And I guess your question comes from experiences of working in Tonga. Um, maybe, Ulatana, would you like to uh, answer that question? It's around just how engages the collective with uh, some of the very key government organizations in uh, driving its agenda around a ban on deep sea mining in Tonga. Uh, I think. Uh, uh, can you hear me? Uh, yes, we can hear you clearly. Uh, Joey? Yes, I can okay. hear you. Uh, okay. Thank you very much for the comments. Uh, Norbert? Norbert or Norbert? Norbert. Norbert. Yes. Uh, from, um, from waking up early in the morning from Germany to, 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 uh, to give us some very good uh, comments. I, I totally agree with you that the ministries in Tonga um, uh, yeah, I think uh, are confused a little bit about uh, how they should work together on 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 on, on these difficult issues, uh, and that is um, a, a kind of a bigger uh, problem, which is uh, I think maybe uh, Drew had given a little bit of a of, of a background about Tonga, with its um, history, uh, which is basically been a top down. Um, uh, uh, um, 
development in, in uh, or political de its political development has mainly been um, dri top down driven, and 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 government has uh, agencies has has got a history of its executive decision making makers also being our traditional leaders, and this um, uh, democratic movement. Uh, or, or, or more uh, democratic representation has only been very, very recent, which is 2010. So that is a, a, a fairly, fairly new uh, a, a kind of, of political change in order for, for government ministries to see themselves as working as civil servants to the rest of the country and not to work for uh, traditional leaders. So just a little bit of context for that, Norbert, uh, because that is, 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 is kind of a, the background for why there is a lack of uh, a direction, I think, from, for, for our government ministries. And uh, that's one thing. But for, for, for my, you know, just a, a, a you know, a partnership, is something that I think is uh, is critical and that we had used in in raising awareness, which is that CSFT reached out to to other partners such as, as such as TTI, which is an education which is an education provider, uh, and for us to think that those uh, issues is uh, uh, critical also for for us and we are also church. Um, we are under the uh, Methodist system, education system. And I think it's those types of, uh, of, of strategic partnerships uh, that can, because I'm, I'm sorry to say this, but I, I have very little faith in, 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 in putting um, these issues solely on the shoulders of government. Because as you say, Norbert, there is, you know, there does not seem to be a, a, a strong, united uh, 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 front to, to lead uh, this, these difficult decisions. And I think TSFT is the, the leading um, a, a, a voice in this, which I think is a very good thing, because that means that in, in we, civil society can get the communities and uh, non-government organizations under their uh, um, under the banner of, of of working together, and I think CSFT is more has the um, more freedom to to work with with partners to be able to push through um, awareness and also to to be able to get more momentum in moving. Um, this issue uh, forward. Thank you. Rather than Thank you, sorry to cut in there. Uh, and since you raised the issue of- uh, It's four o'clock. What's happening uh, nationally, um, we have a comment, but also um, a question from Sweden. Very good morning to you, Helen, and we understand you're not able to ask your question live, but Helen from Sweden uh, is asking how can people outside of the Pacific, and I think it's in regards to Europe, um, help civil society movements like this in, in Tonga. I'll post that to Drew and Tita to um, come back with a response. And while they're doing that, I see Marioni has a, has a hand up and we have Dr. Claire also. So, uh, Marioni, why don't you go first? Uh, good afternoon, everybody. And thank you to um, the speakers for their presentation and their very strong statements. Um, and I'm glad to be um, in solidarity with the Tongan Civil Society a group that is so active in raising awareness, not only in Tonga, but regionally as well. Your impacts uh, are very much appreciated. My question is on um, liability. Um, I understand that the liability and risk relating to deep sea mining is carried by sponsoring states. Um, and I 
for Tonga government sponsoring the TOML company. I'm wondering if the speakers could explain to us and help us understand about the liability and risks that are posed that are carried by our nations when we when we sponsor these these companies or in, in DSM activities. Thank you. Um, Joey, um, would like to respond and uh, let me respond to Marioni and then uh, Tita can respond to Helen. Uh, but but coming back to to government, eh? uh, our approach is we always include government as uh, anywhere, everywhere where we we can get them to come and join us. Eh? Uh, we we can't escape government. Uh, we need to be working with them. Eh? Uh, our educational system has a sort of force. Uh, most of us to think that efficiently is being working on silos. So, uh, so that has process has uh, quietly successful. All our ministries are working in silos, uh, yeah. and uh, which is quite frustrating that uh, we have environment, we have fisheries, we have all the other, the MADEC that needs to be supporting this initiative. Uh, uh, still uh, uh, keep quiet. Yeah? But I think that uh, what Marion is asking is something we are quite concerned about is uh, uh, because uh, the, the company, Tomol, uh, there's no one from Tonga who is a share, all the shareholders are overseas. Uh, so we don't even uh, understand how that works. What we understand that if any uh, liability happen in the mining system, we will all have to go to Canada. Yeah? Uh, um, and in the case uh, we we have uh, done that in our history, maybe we already learned uh, experience where we lost our trust fund uh, in to an American who uh, sort of uh, took us uh, to town and take our twenty five million uh, away. We went to the U.S. Uh, on court cases, we lost another 5 million. Um, so that experience now is going to be repeated by deep sea mining, uh, if anything happens. So um, maybe our current government uh, have the experience to go overseas and go to court cases. But that's mm -hmm. something we need to, uh, it's a very concern all of us, uh, Marion here uh, in Tonga, because we don't have any say uh, on uh, Tomol and uh, how Tomol works. Yeah? Uh, thank you, Drew. Um, just adding to the liability and risk issue, um, some of the risk could be safeguarded if we know exactly what the wordings are in the contract, which is not something that is forthcoming from the government. Um, the issue of effective control where the company is really licensed. Um, that's another issue as Drew had referred to. It's now um, clear that Tomo might be a Tongan um, licensed company, but Deep Green is a Canadian one. So when, um, when the real um, case will come through, if there's any um, environmental impact um, in the deep, um, that would have infringed uh, the other state's uh, property or areas, Tonga will be called forward to um, take forth that uh, whatever that liability is. So that's a real concern um, to Tonga. And I think our current act is not strong enough to safeguard us. Our EIA act is, um, is pitiful uh, if it stand up to actually um, contesting what needs to happen if um, any case will come through. We don't have any resource people that we would refer to or call for help uh, in assessing any EIA report from the contractors. So these are biling up um, as the part of the and parcel of the liability and the risk. So um, we don't have the answer. That's why we wanted to have this dialogue with the government, which um, it's not as easy as we anticipated. And Helen from Sweden, to answer your response, um, how you can help Tonga. Um, we have been um, uh, 
collaborating with uh, people in Canada, in Germany, um, in um, UK, and um, mm -hmm. and this is what they do is actually um, they support us through a uh, provision of funding to finance our outreach program. Um, some of them um, have supported uh, our media um, outreach um, and providing uh, materials like t-shirts, um, uh, printing resources as well. Um, and just raise, raising awareness. Uh, they are very vocal in their own um, civil society space. So just explaining uh, to them why we in the Pacific are so concerned and needed their help because most of the companies and the contractors are from Europe. Uh, they're not from um, the Pacific. So raising the fact that we are worried for our livelihood um, in the region and we are not supposed to be treated as a testing um, site for their nuclear waste and for their deep sea mining exploration and mining. So that message can be carried forward in your um, own space. So maybe to cut it short, just leave the Pacific alone. And that's why we're calling for total ban. Hope that, um, um, that answer your uh, question. Thank you. Thank you uh, very much, John. I, uh, I, you know, um, um, Joey, sorry, yeah. can I just add? Uh, Joey? Yes, okay. Sorry, Joey, can I just add to, to uh, my, my comments to Helen? Um, I think uh, Dita is correct. In, in one, of the re, one of the things that, that is making this more complex or uh, uh, one of the issues that making this issue more complex is the fact that our countries are reliant on funding sources from other countries, as you know. So whilst on the same time, they are saying to us, you know, to try and raise awareness, for example, the EU. I remember clearly when we were doing our, our uh, uh, deep sea mining partnership for awareness with CSFT in 2015, 2016, EU had funded government offices to come and to try and talk about laws that are possibilities of managing this absent funding. So, you know, uh, this kind of how are we going to, who are we going to listen to is, is an, a clear example, I think, Helen, of what Tita is saying. If, there, if you are more vocal in your civil society spaces in your own countries, to sort of demand the fact that you are you your your governments are are funding certain initiatives that is supporting the research and uh, the kind of organized systematic organization of putting things in place for deep sea mining. So I think that that is I think a clear. Uh, 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 aim or objective from these kind of big funding partners from 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 Europe. Thank you, Ongata. And you know, it just draws us back to the recent parliamentary resolution that was done by the European Parliament, calling for a moratorium. And that's something that the Pacific would like to call on to our partners in Europe is to keep your governments at account and make sure we follow through. And just trying to draw back to Maroni around, back to Maroni about risks and liabilities. Kuatea um, has had, we can look at Tonga. We can also look at Papua New Guinea who pursued this and ended up going through a legal battle and had lost um, its investment shares with then the bankrupt Nautilus. So there are other experiences in the region uh, that we could learn from uh, around risks and liabilities, and Papua New Guinea is one of them. Uh, I see Dr. Claire has a hand up. So Dr. Claire, would you like to ask your question live? Thank you, Joey. Yes, I, I firstly just want to join Marioni in, in congratulating the Tonga Civil Society Organization and um, Dr. Kata and um, Pesi Fanua um, but it's been a fabulous um, presentation of the amazing work you've done and really working 
you know, from the grassroots up, consultations with people um, in all of the regions of Tonga so that you've got a really strong, firm basis for being able to say, we don't want this. I was particularly impressed, and I was impressed with the film too. The film is wonderful. But I was impressed with the fact that you've also been focused, um, well, you moved from the call for a moratorium to a ban, like absolutely strong position. And I, if I'm hearing what Felina Tita said uh, correctly, that actually came in response to when you got reactivated after Deep Green started, you know, sort of really working um, strongly in Tonga after it took over Nautilus's um, um, uh, license um, and, and TOML. Um, but to, to move from that to the ban position, which is a much stronger position, absolutely fabulous. But also that you're not just concerned about EEZ, I mean, about mining within Tonga's EEZ, but also in the area, and that you've been writing to ISA. And my, my question is really about whether or not that would be another very good campaign to actually say, like you're saying, cancel the license to be a whole, you know, a whole global campaign to ISA, making them the, the focus of this particular um, in, uh, uh, action of saying, cancel all licenses, you know, and you, we may get a lot of support for that. I'd really like, I would like to hear what you, you think about that. And then just two other um, points that I wanted to make. Um, one, um, about deep green, yeah. And because we, you're answering Helen's question about what you can do in Europe, and the point was made that, you know, the European country, the companies that are actually involved in um, the, um, it, with licenses to, to um, do deep sea mining in the area. Um, I've pointed out before, and I think it's important because I think they're hiding behind Canada. You know, deep green, the principles in deep green are all Australians. And I think that we should, from the Pacific, start actually calling out Australia you know, for the, the frontline position that's been taken and the, the, um, well, the way in which Deep Green is actually positioning itself to speak on behalf of small Pacific Island states, extremely paternalistically, but also purporting to be interested in our well-being and, and in um, making things better for um, Pacific Island states' economies, like we're poor and we don't have uh, much in the way of um, options. Um, to, to develop. Um, and quite aside from that also, its whole claim about, you know, being a sort of climate champion and actually saving the planet um, by bringing in the, you know, base metals that are needed to, to transition um, the global economy uh, away from fossil fuels and to green energy. Um, you know, they, they're registered in Canada, Deep Green is registered in Canada. Um, but its, its principles are Australians, and they are the same people who were involved in Nautilus, you know. And so, I mean, this has all been documented, as you probably know, in the um, Mining Watch publications that came out, um, I think, in 2019 and 2020, Greenpeace was one, but prior to that, the Canadian and other Mine Watch um, campaigns put out, you know, very kind of... Um, expose really of this of both nautilus and of deep green really shot um what do you say sh shonky or dubious dodgy company you know and it, it's really sad that some of our countries are, are working with them so yeah the question really about isa um and a campaign directed directly at isa because the thing about isa too is you know and this is what's really disappointing but also even more disturbing is there are people in ISA who actually have had long links with the Pacific, you know, and they've been very supportive of Deep Green. So what is going on here? You know, there's something that's really quite disturbing. And I think that we need to kind of address these things kind of head on. Thank you. Thank you, Claire. Uh, Drua Tita, would you like to respond? Claire, I think that uh, we fully support what you are um, what you are saying. We are on board. Uh, uh, we like that idea, uh, but uh, I think we are also mindful. ISA is uh, has conflict of interest in this whole issue, right? uh, where they are supposed to be watching uh, all of us. Uh, uh, but at the same time now, the pockets are waiting for the uh, uh, coins. <laughs> coins to come into all their pockets before uh, any of the, the countries. Yeah? So 
So definitely we will be, uh, we fully support uh, a call on ISA to cancel all the, the contract. Uh, but I think that uh, uh, Joey and Nancy need to join us to all work on our PC uh, ambassador who are supposed to be representing us to ISA, that we need to have the same call. Uh, not that they enjoy all the good trip to Jamaica and, uh, uh, and the red carpet treatment by ISA to our government uh, employment, employees, uh, but they need to, to remember uh, those who are in the islands, not that they are in New York, uh, they live like New Yorker and uh, uh, so definitely something we will be very interested. We can uh, start talking to our ambassadors in uh, uh, in Europe. Uh, I think we can ask question uh, in our parliament how effective our ambassadors uh, in uh, taking up the needs of the people uh, of our own countries. But I think at the same time. Uh, uh, we would be, we understand uh, deep green uh, folks from Australia. Uh, and I think we need to start talking. You need to tell us if they have uh, uh, citizenship in Canada or still citizenship in Australia, because it will make a difference in how we will approach uh, this particular issue. But uh, definitely uh, ISA, Australia, uh, and our Tongan Fijian ambassador uh, to start connecting with all of us uh, against ISA. Tita, you have anything to add? Uh, thank you, Claire, and appreciate the support. Um, as Tru said, uh, we have to be mindful, and that's I think we have always had it in our radar. We're having recoup and uh, and design the perfect strategy for ISA. Uh, there has been plenty letters uh, with very cryptic response uh, from the Secretary General, but uh, we still are knocking on the doors and um, sourcing support on how to actually yield the best result. But um, that is a, an excellent idea if we can actually target um, the head of the oct octopus rather than all the um, the tentacles. We're also mindful of the one um, behind uh, the green being Australian and True has articulated that question. Are they still Australian um, citizen or they have um, uh, now become Canadian? Um, we know it's tech seven and that was a strategic move to, to paste the uh, deep green in Canada. Um, and it was also part of the discussion on how to best um, strategize to get Australia. Um, in Canada, they um, I understood that they are pushing for a regulation to hold um, registered companies in Canada accountable uh, if there is any uh, environmental impact in any mining site um, that sponsored them. So that's a very positive move. Uh, it might take some time, but the fact that um, Canada has started means the others can follow and learn from it. So um, we could lobby um, Australia, looking at the foreign affairs and how to best um, utilize that strategy. But uh, we're still currently doing our background check um, to make sure that uh, w once we start implementing, um, we're not going to pull back um, again. Thank you. Thank you, Tita, and that could be a uh, running campaign, cancel the license, then DSM, act ISA. I think Phil has a question on our chat box and I'd like to make it interactive. So Phil, can you ask your question, pose your question? Phil, you have the floor. <laughs> Are you trying to unmute? There we go. Hi, hi, Joey and uh, Yoda, and thank you everyone for your contributions and and uh, Drew and Tita. The work that's going on in Tonga is is really uh, incredible and vital to the to the wider campaign. Um, just just a question around Deep Green and and as you know, they're they're moving towards um, the seeking to be. Come a publicly listed company on the New York Stock Exchange. 
uh, which would see their 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 value, the value of their company skyrocket uh, to something like well to two point nine billion US dollars. What would you say to the notion that Deep Green might be simply using Tonga's sponsorship to boost the value of their company and their shareholdings, and that you know they they may not actually ever uh, intend to mine the area that uh, is is sponsored by Tonga. Thank you, Thank you, Phil. Uh, I know Tita did not uh, acknowledge uh, New Zealand support, so you are asking the question. Uh, uh, and I know Nancy will be asking soon uh, why we're not acknowledging Bianco. Uh, <laughs> support in all this. Uh, so thank you, New Zealand. Thank you, Pianco. Um, but, but definitely, uh, I, I think feel uh, that that could be the case. Uh, but it doesn't mean that we um, slow down on this particular issue. Uh, I think that we need to give some uh, encouragement to our uh, to our neighbors in our region, to Kiribati, to Cook Island, to uh, Nauru, uh, and even others who maybe start thinking about uh, seabed mining uh, when they wave the flag that uh, this is so much money that will be coming. Uh, so, so basically, I think for us here in Tonga, uh, that would be great if uh, uh, that will be no mining happen. But I think that uh, 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 Total Ten can uh, hopefully will excite our other neighbors. Uh, then we can share our stories, we can share uh, our um, uh, experience, uh, the time we cry, the time we feel there's no support and we are walking alone. Uh, and I think that uh, that should help us in the Pacific uh, to make a stand against seabed mining. Malo. Hello, Joey. May I just add uh, to, to the conversation? Yes. It, just to add to what Drew is saying, I think, Phil, you have a very good point. I think for Tonga's case, it would be great if there is some kind of, um, you know, information about the fact that there can be those uh, intentions uh, or non-intentions that, that, that the company is using the government to, for its own purposes, as you had, um, um, uh, you had mentioned, I think for for Tonga's uh, uh, for Tonga's situation, such information, if there is such information that that can be fed to CSFT, to us to be able to call to bring to our governments, you know, evidence of the fact that really they don't they're not interested in deep sea mining. They're just in. I mean, they're interested to use this opportunity for their own benefits on other issues, because it then will create a lot of pressure on our governments to see that, uh, you know, that they're being duped. Although they are being duped, but if we, there's evidence for that, then it will make our case even stronger. Thank you, Onotea. We have roughly about five minutes. Um, if there's, any last comments? Um, and there is a, sorry, just another anonymous question asking how can the diaspora Tongans uh, in Australia, New Zealand uh, and other places overseas can support? Tita and Drew, while you uh, respond to that question, I'll give you two minutes also to each wrap up your um, response before we uh, come to an end with this webinar. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Joey. I, I think this is a very exciting. We need to get the support from our diaspora population. Uh, as for Tonga, uh, uh, our budget uh, was just passed in Parliament uh, last week. Our, uh, total tech was uh, 514, 514.4. Uh, that is our government debt, 41.5% uh, of that is our GDP. 
but uh, uh, money that comes from uh, overseas, from our diaspora, uh, makes up 48% of our GDP here in the kingdom. So for us, definitely, uh, uh, when we look at the uh, public finance management systems of our government, and uh, we are still surviving by the uh, support from diaspora and other countries. So what we are doing, uh, we are uh, hoping in the support of Piango and uh, um, UNDP, we're setting up a, a submission portal uh, that would be hopefully kicked up uh, in uh, late August, early September, where we hope uh, that a lot of these issues will, uh, we have submission coming directly from our diaspora population, but not only that, it will come directly from our very community in the outer, outer islands, uh, so that we can make those submission to government uh, in relation to uh, budget, government budget, uh, and support for communities, but it also for uh, policies and legislation. So we hope um, uh, that in uh, August, we, that our diaspora population can uh, uh, listen in as, uh, as we will uh, launch our portal in uh, late August or early September, uh, that they, we would like their voices uh, being uh, shared with the uh, government. And uh, Tita can add. Eh? Uh, thank you, Joey, um, for the anonymous uh, question. Um, I'd like to also share that we are working together in partnership with Greenpeace, um, also Deep Sea, um, uh, conservation coalition um, and part of that conversation is the media campaign we're holding in Tonga through radio and television can be shared through a channel within Australia and New Zealand and this will be in local dialects Tongan language so our diaspora will have access to pure uncensored um, conversation with people on the ground with, from various um, communities um, who talks about their concerns about deep sea mining. Uh, we might translate a couple, um, but that will depends on the response. So um, this is how we would like to engage our diaspora by taking Tonga's voice directly through radios and de television channel um, in Australia and New Zealand. Um, Thank you. Thank you very quickly, Dr. Oatea. Uh, hello, Joey, uh, thank you very much for the opportunity. And um, I, I'm going to have to leave very soon, but uh, I think for, for myself, the, like I said at the beginning of this discussion, I think strongly that uh, here in the Pacific, we need to forge strong partnerships uh, of coalitions that have the same um, uh, aims and same ideas and same visions so that we can work towards uh, banning of deep sea mining in the Pacific, in Tonga. And, uh, and I think there's been a great uh, suggestions, suggestion from Claire that we should really just start a cancel uh, exploration, exploration license from IC, ISA. Uh, but thank you very much for everyone. Malo Aupito. And uh, we'll see you in the next webinar. Malo, thank you very much to our panelists. Um, the very clear message is the need for partnerships, uh, the solidarity uh, partnerships that are happening nationally and those that are happening regionally. And that's why uh, such webinars and such a regional campaign such as uh, the Pacific Blue Line is calling on Pacific people to have a stand, uh, draw that blue line uh, on the issue of deep sea mining. Having said that, the documentary that was premiered this afternoon would be made available. You can check the social media platforms uh, and if you need to get in touch with uh, any of our panelists to support, uh, please 
uh, send us an email. We'll be happy, more than happy to connect you to with, uh, with these partners on ground. I'll hand it back to the moderator, Namise. Thank you. Thank you, Joey, and uh, thank you to our panels this afternoon. That is a very um, uh, interactive uh, session on the Q and A, and we thank you for your um, for um, um, answering to all the questions this afternoon. And uh, now that brings to the end of our session. And uh, thank you, Tonga, for the the impressive work that you are doing. And we um, we wish you all the best, and we continue to uh, support and also to hear the strong voices coming um, against deep sea mining. And uh, I must add that that's a very courageous move from the CSO in Tonga. And before we go, we would like you to please join the Pacific Blue Line calling for a ban on DSM. You can uh, sign the petition here on uh, www.pacificblueline.org. Uh, you can also go into the uh, website and uh, and sign the petition and, and join the Pacific for call on the uh, for, uh, for ban on deep sea. Thank you so much, uh, Drew. Thank you, Dr. Umetea. And thank you, Tita, for today's session. And uh, Malo Opito. <laughs>